What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to build out this cool search and autofill function with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at this auto search autofill thing with Kinter. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna build out this search thing. So I can start to type in PE, and you can see we've got this list of uh, pizza toppings here. Pepperoni and peppers pops up. If I click on pepperoni, boom, it pops it in there. I can go ahead and delete this, and the list pops back up. I can start to type something else and oh, it figures out we're looking for cheese and that's cheese. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. Really cool little function and uh, actually kind of easy to do. So so I've got a file called fill.py. It's our basic Kinter starter code that we always have. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And you can find the code for this in the link in the comment section below and also the list to the playlist with 160 plus other Kinter videos. That's really cool. So let's start out with by just creating a very quick label. I'm gonna call this my label, and this is gonna be a label. We wanna put it in root, and we want the text to equal start typing or something, right? And let's give this a font of, let's say Helvetica, and let's make it like 14, just to make it a little bit bigger. And let's give this a foreground color of gray, just to change the color a bit. And then let's go my underscore label dot pack, and let's give this a pad Y of 20, to push it down the screen a little bit. So let's uh, you know create a label. And now let's create an entry box. So let's call this my underscore entry. And this is gonna be an entry box. We wanna put it in root. And let's give this a font of, again, let's go with our trusty Helvetica. And let's make this like, like size 20, just to make it a little bigger. And then let's my entry dot pack. And we don't have to give this any pad Y because this guy up here was already sort of padded. So, okay, now let's create a list box. And we've created a list boxes a lot. Let's call this my list. And this is gonna be a list box. We wanna put it in root and let's give this a width of like 50 just to make it a little bigger. Finally, let's my underscore list dot pack this guy. And let's give this a pad Y of like 40 to really push it down the screen. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure this is looking okay. So let's go Python fill dot pi. And we get this basic layout, looks pretty good. Start typing, we've got an entry box, we've got a list box. So, okay, now let's go ahead and add the items to our list box. So let's create a list of pizza toppings. And I'm gonna call this toppings. And this is just gonna be a basic Python list. And let's just start out by adding some toppings. So pepperoni, I'm also gonna add peppers to make a couple of them that are similar, so we can see what that looks like when we search for similar items. Uh, let's also go, what, mushroom? And let's say, let's also add cheese, and a couple more, maybe onions. I don't know what the kids like these days on pizza, ham, <laughs> I don't know. And let's go taco, I don't know if taco is, actual, is an actual topping, but it is now, so, okay. We've got our list here. So now let's add the toppings to our list. And I'm gonna do that by calling update and then passing in toppings. Now we haven't created this update function yet, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's come up here and let's update the list box. And you're gonna see why we're doing it this way in just a second. So update, and we need to pass in something. I'm gonna call this data. We could call it toppings, I guess, but we're passing in the toppings, so I'm gonna refer to it as data, so it just is separate than the word topping, so it's easier to keep track of all of this. So the first thing we wanna do is clear the list box. And you'll see why we need to do this in a second, because basically the list box is gonna update as we type, and if we delete what we've typed, we wanna re-update the list box and we want to delete what was in there previously. So let's start out by deleting the list box and let's call my underscore list dot delete. We want to delete everything. So that's between zero and end. And that's how we delete stuff from a list box. If you don't know about list boxes, check the uh, comment section below for a link to the playlist. We've got a lot of videos on list boxes. So now let's add 
toppings to list box. And to do that, I'm gonna loop through our list because remember down here, this toppings is a Python list. So to get the items out of it, we need to loop through it, right? So let's go for item in data. It's not called toppings anymore. It's called data because we called it data right there, right? So let's go my underscore list dot insert. We wanna insert this at the end of the list. And what do we wanna insert? The item, which is each single item in our list. So if we go ahead and save this, we called it here. Let's run this really quickly just to make sure that worked. So when the program starts, our list is automatically sort of uh, added to our list box. So, okay, that's looking good. So now let's create a binding on the list box on click. So now if we click on one of the items in our list box, we want it to appear in the entry box just for fun, right? So let's call my underscore list dot bind. And we've done lots of bindings in the past. Check the playlist if you want to learn about those. But you might remember for list boxes, we do double brackets. And that's sort of weird for bindings. Usually we just do single brackets. But for list boxes, we use double brackets. And the binding we want to do is list box select. And notice the L and the S are both capitalized. So whenever we click on the list box, we're doing this list box select thing. We're selecting something in the list box. And when we do that, we want an event to fire. We want a function to be called. And I'm going to call that function fill out because we're going to fill out the entry box with whatever we clicked on. So let's make that function really quick. So let's come up here and uh, update entry box with list box clicked. I guess. So define fill out. And remember, whenever we do bindings, we're passing an event, and we have to account for that event. And we do that by typing E here. Some people type in event, I just type in E, because I know what that means. So the first thing we want to do is delete whatever's already in the entry box, if there is anything. So let's go my underscore entry dot delete, we want to delete from zero to end. So let's delete whatever is in the entry box. Now let's add clicked list item to entry box, right? And to do that, we just go my underscore entry dot insert. And we want to insert in the zeroth position. What do we want to add in there? We want to add in my underscore list dot get and we want the active thing to be added. So let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure that worked. Uh, it should. So if I click on pepperoni, boom, pepperoni pops up there. So all right, no big deal. Pretty simple. So now all we have to do is work on what happens when we type something into the entry box. And to do that, we're going to create a binding. So let's create a binding on the entry box. So whenever we type something into the entry box, a function gets called. So let's go my underscore entry dot bind. And we need to pass something in here and then call a function. So the thing we want to bind is something called key release. So basically, whenever you press any key on your keyboard and then let it off, we've basically typed something, right? That key release is a binding that we can call. And when we do that, let's go, let's call this check. We want to check to see if what we just typed is in the list box below. So, all right, let's create that function. Let's uh, create function to check entry versus list box. So define check. This is a, a binding, so we have to pass an event in there. So up until now, everything has been just sort of basic normal stuff that we've done in the past. Now we want to think about how we want to search the list box. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically take whatever we typed and assign it to a variable and then check that variable versus what's in the list box by comparing it to a Python list. And we can check if items are in a list by calling in. So if variable in list, do something. And that's all we're going to do. So first thing we need to do is uh, grab what was typed. So I'm going to create a variable called typed, right? And this is just going to be my underscore entry dot get. 
This will get whatever we typed and assign it to this variable typed, right? So now, first, we need to see, have we typed anything at all? So let's go if typed equals, equals, equals nothing, that means we haven't typed anything yet. Well, what do we wanna do if we haven't typed anything? Well, let's just make sure that the entire list is in our list box. So let's set data equal to toppings. Now we don't have a data variable yet, but we just created it and you'll see why in a second. This toppings is our list of toppings. Now, why do we wanna do that? Well, let's say I typed pepperoni and it showed pepperoni. Let's say I started to type pepperoni, P-E-P. -E -P. Pepperoni pops up and peppers pops up. And then what if I change my mind and I hit delete a bunch of times and I go back to nothing? Well, we wanna make sure pepperoni and peppers are removed and the entire list is re-added because we're starting over. So basically this is saying, hey, if we're starting over, start over, add the toppings back to our list box. And we're gonna pass this data into this update function again, like we did earlier when we first filled out the list box. Well, it'll make sense in just a second. For now, just go with it. So if data, so if typed equals nothing, put our toppings in this data variable, else, now let's set that data variable to a blank Python list. Now let's, let's search. So let's go for item in toppings. And remember toppings is our list of toppings. So we're gonna loop through our list of toppings and we're gonna say, hey, if whatever we typed is in that item, we wanna do something, right? But here it gets a little tricky. So say I typed lowercase p for pepperoni, but our list, if you remember, has uppercase. So we need to convert this to lowercase and whatever we type to lowercase so it's easier to compare them. So we can do that by calling typed.lower, call the lower function, and here, same thing, item dot lower. I already put the brackets, it looks like. So this will convert both of the things we typed and the thing in the list to lowercase so we can compare them. So we're saying if whatever we typed is in the Python list, right, then what do we wanna do? Well, let's add it to this list. So we can call data dot append and we wanna append with item, right? So that's all there is to it. Now we've got this data list. So let's say we start typing P. All of a sudden pepperoni and peppers get added to this data list. Now we need to update our actual list box with those two things. So we can call this update function and we can pass in this data. Oops, I called it date. That should be data, data, there we go, All right? And we do that, let's see, right there. That's it, so let's update our list box with selected items, right? And so that should do it. So we can go ahead and save this and run it. I start to type in PE, oh, it figures out pepperoni and peppers. I can click there, hey, we're done. If I hit delete, you can see, boom, it pops back our list. That's very cool. So I can start to type in M for mushrooms. Well, mushrooms has an M, ham also has an M. MU is only in mushrooms, so boom, mushrooms. Very, very cool. So I could type C for cheese. Cheese pops up. There's also a C in taco though, so I don't know which one we want. Let's go taco. Boom, there's taco. And very, very cool. And you'll notice as I start to type stuff, when I hit delete and this goes back to nothing, our entire list pops up. And that's why right here, we did this whole thing right here. So if there's nothing, pass toppings into data. And then down here, when we update data, we'll be updating our entire list of toppings right here and re-adding it to the list. And that's why we do that. Otherwise, this is really, really basic. So not very sophisticated for searching. We're just saying, hey, if this item is in this list, then add it to this list here and then update it, basically. But uh, it gets the job done for basic things, for simple things, simple searches, and things like that. This is sort of the beginning of auto fill out and auto correct, sort of. Uh, you can sort of tinker around with that and play with it and uh, have a lot of fun. So that's my basic search. 
And that's all for this video. So if you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Konami.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. They pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Konami.com, and I'll see you in the next video.